<laughs> well, we're all two years older, including Tom Brady, who, even though he is indeed 44 and supposedly retired, continues to be the talk of the league because he's the one who six days after supposedly retiring said never say never said I don't know how I'm going to feel when June or July rolls around so obviously both the general manager and the head coach of his current team the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were asked about it in Indianapolis on Tuesday let's hear from both Jason Light the GM Bruce Arians the head coach on the possibility of Tom Brady playing again in 2022. I, I think with a with a Tom Brady, you never, I personally, never want to completely close the door. Now I don't have any information that suggests that he is going to come back. I mean, I'm very good friends with him. I, we talk. We don't. We haven't talked about that. I don't want to apply any pressure. I'm not saying that we're uh, by any means we're planning on this happening. I just made a remark this morning that uh, we'll leave a light on for him. If Tom says he wants to come back and play for another team, do you envision like kind of granting him his wish or whatever? No. No. <laughs> Is that because it's acrimonious? You just don't want him? Uh... Bad business. What if a team made it worth your while? Five number ones? <laughs> maybe, maybe. So none of, it, it wouldn't tug on your heartstrings at all to do a solid for a guy, you know, that, that came and played for you guys for two no. years? No. Is no, no, not no, at all. No emotional attachment no. in that kind of decision. We'll play golf. If I, if I beat him, he has to come back. So, look, you got lights saying they're going to leave the light on, and I think they recognize they're unlikely to land a quarterback who would be so clearly accomplished that it would make it impossible to bring back Tom Brady. And I think Brady was kind of – my theory is kind of hoping they move on from him so it's easier to move on from them after June 1. Yeah. I think, and we've right. talked about this before, Tom Brady didn't retire from football. Tom Brady retired from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he hasn't yet to come out and be aggressive about that position. After yesterday, maybe he's going to have to. Maybe that's another factor yeah, sounds in like his it. path right. back to the NFL, especially if you listen to Arians. But you know what, Chris? I don't think Arians has any juice in the organization when it comes to I don't to this. think so either. I don't either. think Tom Brady's calling right. Bucko Bruce and saying, hey, can you trade me to another team? This is Jason Light or Glazer level decision making. Arians can say all he wants, but at the end of the day, I don't think he's making the decision. I, I agree. I think this is uh, above him in that way. And I don't mean that disrespectfully for Bruce Arians, but yeah, this is, it's a huge organizational decision. It is. And of course, yeah, there's a lot that plays into it. It's Tom Brady. It's the goat, you know, it's the money, the ticket factors, all of that. I, I'm with you there. I think it's totally an ownership Jason light decision. Definitely. You know, I felt like, Hey, Bruce Arians just, you know, I know he can be a little short with answers and all of that, but I think there are the, those rumors percolating about Brady right now. You know, the stuff we talked about on Monday. I mean, I, you and I know we, we both have enough ta tangible evidence or people we talk to to know that it's real. So he's hearing that. I bet you he's annoyed with that, too. So, you know, even though it's not him, he's kind of going to show his little power, at least in the situation, or, or at least just make it a little, a little bit more uncomfortable for Brady and his camp to feel like, oh, they're going to be able to maneuver and make what, whatever move they want to make here if he does decide to come back. I still think... He like I like how you said that he didn't retire from football. He retired from the Bucks. I do think he's you know retired from the Bucks and thinking about retirement of the football, but just doesn't want to close the door shut completely yet. You know, I think it's go back to something you brought up many a times. He brings up that point about what am I going to feel like in June and July and, you know, training camp when I start to see people on TV. And I think that's going to be the ultimate final test to see if Brady stays home or goes somewhere. Um, but, yeah, that, that was Jason Light. I mean, I'm in full transparency. I felt like looked nervous answering those questions yesterday. And I felt like Bruce Arians, just, again, my opinion and, and evaluating the situation looked like a guy that was a little like, hey, I'm hearing some of these rumors and I'm annoyed. And Tom Brady ain't going to get away with all this crap that's out there. And he kind of, in a Bruce Arians way, kind of tried to put an end to all of that. When you think back to the statement that Tom Brady issued on the day that he retired, he was very yeah. comprehensive and profuse in thanking the Buccaneers. Pretty much everyone in the organization didn't mention the Patriots right. at all. That created a little bit of a firestorm, but maybe so we were supposed to interpret that as a farewell to the Bucs, not a farewell 
to football, not a farewell. Maybe you're right, Mike. And thank you to the Patriots. Just I'm done in Tampa Bay. And look, Chris, something I want to go back and do, it's on my list of things to take a closer look at. When he did his extension last year, in my mind, it was a cap management tool. It wasn't, hey, right. I really love it here. I want to extend my commitment by a year. And that's important because if he did that deal last year as a favor to them to reduce his cap number, it makes it easier for him to go to them quietly and say, why are you, why are you doing this? If I want to go somewhere else, just let me go. Whether it's release me, yeah. whether it's trade me for some face-saving fifth-round pick or something like that, but don't stand in my way if I want to go somewhere else because all I had to do last year was was not do the stupid extension and keep you in a bad salary cap spot, and that wouldn't have been good for anybody. So let's not play this game. Yes, you have me under contract for a year, but I signed a two-year deal two years ago, and that's the deal we should be thinking about. Yeah, I I think so there. I think it goes to the point, Mike, about, you know, maybe some conversations have already been had, you know, maybe even back to that point that you're talking about there where, you know, Brady, the ownership, Don Yee, have had some of these conversations a little bit that, you know, you can't tie down Brady if he decides to want to go. So I, I would think that there's some some back room, high level conversations that are going on there that, yeah, maybe Bruce Arians maybe is not, you know, getting the, the, the full green light or all authority to be a part of those. Definitely. Now, where I do find it interesting still with the Buccaneers is just this one thing, because this this is one thing I've noticed in the, you know, throughout the media the last like 10 days or whenever Brady retired. Is like people like act like the Bucks aren't still good. Like if I'm one of these free agent quarterbacks, all right, maybe not Aaron Rodgers. All right, I get that. Maybe not Aaron Rodgers because there's a little bit more of a comparison and pressure with him going to the Tampa Bay Bucks. But if I'm one of these free agents or one of these guys that wants to get traded somewhere, man, the Bucks would be at the top of my list. What is not to like about the Bucks? They're still one of the most perfectly orchestrated teams in all of football. I mean, I think we both would sit here and go, man, if they were healthy going in the playoffs. I don't know what would have happened. We know that. But you look at them and you go, offensive line, top notch. Running back, okay, they got enough there. It's good. Receivers, tight end, all that. You know, It's all there, whether Gronk comes back or not. Defensive side of the ball, it's top notch throughout. I mean, just stars everywhere. So that's where I do look at the situation and go, I think the Bucs are going to be a player here at some point. You know, Deshaun Watson, where his options end up and, and how all that plays out. How can he not look at Tampa and go, man, I'd love to go there with Bruce Arians and that team and, you know, the pressure won't just be on me to carry the squad right away. I can get back into the flow of things and then kick butt by about halfway part, part of the year and start to take over games that way. Uh, the Bucks to me, are one of the more intriguing offseason you know, teams to look out for and what they're going to do here because they're still in the Super Bowl window. There, I saw yesterday while we were doing our interviews in the afternoon that Arians said something about Deshaun Watson that didn't sound right. like it was a promising destination. It's an ownership call because of the off-field concerns and realities for Deshaun Watson. But when you consider what Russell Wilson said yesterday about loving Seattle and wanting to stay there when he was asked about the possibility of going to the Washington Commanders, I don't think he's leaving because I don't think they're going to let him go and he's not the kind of guy to overtly fight for his way out. He's going to compartmentalize and I think it's easy for him to say, last year was a fluke, I was injured, let's give it another try this year and see if we can get the most out of this new offense with Shane Waldron and maximize the other changes that were made. So I think he's out of play for the Bucks. And Rodgers, you, you mentioned him. I'm not sure the Packers would trade him to an NFC team, an elite NFC yeah, team that's like right the 49ers too. I'm with or you. the Buccaneers. So uh, no question, it, 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 look, I, it's going to be an attractive destination, but whoever they get, I don't think it's going to be so clearly good and so clearly expensive that they couldn't reabsorb Brady. I just don't think Brady yeah. wants to be yeah. reabsorbed by them. And maybe this dance is all about just making it harder for him to go somewhere else. Because because from Arian's perspective, does he really want to see Brady go to San Francisco and and be a Super Bowl quarterback and win another Absolutely one in his not. first year? Right. If he if he does that somewhere else, it makes it look even more irrelevant that Arians had a role in it, that others had a role in it. It just looks like Brady goes somewhere where there's a lot of talent in place, and he's the difference maker. He's the one that pushes them to a Super Bowl championship and no one else. Yeah, I I think you're right about that. I mean, Bruce doesn't want to see that as a competitor, first off. He he doesn't. I mean, that that would be the first thing. Yes, I think just overall – 
you know, whatever you want to say, the perception, the aura of Bruce Arians, yes, would take a blow a little bit if Tom Brady goes somewhere and wins the Super Bowl at some other place, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I think that. And, and, and at the baseline, like no coach or team wants to feel like they've been used, right? And then when you hear the rumors and things that are out there, you know, and again, I, I know they're rumors, but usually with Brady, when we hear rumors, they all are true. That's 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 what people miss. Like it's it ends up being true. Oh, he might go to Tampa or San Francisco. Oh, wait, it's real. Oh, he actually is going to Tampa. It, there's you can go down the list of kind of the stories with Brady throughout time and go, yeah, when you're where there's smoke, there's fire a little bit. And like that, not only do you would you feel used with Bruce Arians, but again, there's a little bit of a perception out there that, yeah, there was you know, they weren't on the same page always. The people I talked to when we discussed this on Monday about the Sean Payton Brady angle and them both going to Miami, hey, one of the things that I was told by multiple people again was that Brady, you know, got frustrated with Arians towards the end of the year because him and Leftwich, as we discussed, would come up with the game plan and really go through the intricacies. And then Bruce would kind of come in and blow things up and change things around. And that frustrated them. And again, just I've heard it too much for, for me to not think it's somewhat real there. And I would think that would, you know, piss off Bruce Arians a little bit too. Sorry, London. Well, and we haven't had that, that in a while. while. And by the way, hello, hello, London. They're moving our show hello, around. London. Now it's the off season. Some nights we're on at seven local times. Some days we're on at five. So all we can say to the folks who enjoy the program on Sky Sports NFL is, number one, we have no control over when the show is on. Number two, you're just going to have to check your listings, not just weekly, but daily to see which day we are going to be on. Another thing about Brady, he doesn't like to get into public confrontations. He doesn't like to have to say things not. that will get him criticized by anyone. And I think the last thing he wants is a situation like the one Aaron Rodgers has been in, regardless of how it resolves. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But and, and, and also I think Brady thinks he's above having to play these games. He should just be able to say, I'm Tom Brady, and I think you should let me go, and we shouldn't have to play this. We shouldn't have to do this. We shouldn't have to mess around. You should appreciate what I did for you sufficiently that I don't have to dirty my hands or dirty my mouth trying to get you to let me the F out of here. I think that is the attitude emanating from the greatest player of all time, and I think he's earned that. I think he's earned the ability to not have to work all that hard to get the Buccaneers to do what I think he wants them to do. Uh, I, I, I mean, I hear that he has earned it. Earned it. Uh, you know, again, it's still the NFL. It's still business. You still got a lot of male ego. You know, alpha male. What you're not going to do that to me? At least on the coaching playing side, that aren't going to love that. I get it. Yes, Brady has earned that right. And you know, back to what we talked about earlier. I just think that there's, you know. I, Again, I, I would think that there's a relationship between Brady and his camp and Tampa ownership. And, of course, we know Jason Light is close with Brady. He was in New England. I was in New England with Jason Light. So there's that relationship there to think that, yes, the, there's been probably some talks. And I, I, I think at the end of the day, the Glacier family, no matter what, is going to look at Brady and go, yes, if you really want to go somewhere, I think they'll make it happen. They're good people for one. They're going to really love and respect Brady for the fact that he took a chance and came to Tampa Bay, not a big market. None of us expected that to happen. And then, of course, bringing them a Super Bowl. I think they're forever indebted to him. And, yeah, uh, you know, again, back to the original, I don't think Bruce Arians could stop this if he wants. This is, again, this is a Glazier decision where Jason Light will be involved in a little bit. But this is, this is the big timers involved here. There's just something about the mere fact that Arians was talking about Brady yesterday as if he were any other player on whom they could or would squat. Because he's contractual. hearing like, these this things. Is, this is this to is, me. This, this is, is Tom Bruce Brady, though. These things. I know. He's getting frustrated. I know. And that's the way Bruce is. But I'm just saying yes, he's something chipping. about that in and of itself seems like Tom Brady shouldn't be getting treated that way. And re regardless of what you think of Brady – Still, he's accomplished more than anyone else. Seven Super Bowl wins. He's reached a level yep. that I think there's an inherent respect that he has earned. Again, regardless of what you think of him, regardless of whether or not you're just sick of him and want him to go away, I think that, that those kinds of comments are reserved for other players, not for Tom Brady. He's crossed that boundary. He's, he's above everybody else, and it's just weird to hear Bruce Arians talk like that, and I think it'll piss Brady off. I think when he sees, if he's paying any attention whatsoever to what Bruce Arians has been saying, 
I think it will agitate him and it will make him more likely to come back next year just so he can stick it to Bruce Arians for saying all the things he did at the scouting combine. I mean, that's just human nature. But it wouldn't surprise me if, it, if he's already thinking about it, if he's already planning to try to do it. It's not going to make him any less determined. He's not going to go hide in a corner because Bruce Arians is huffing and yeah. puffing. It's going to make him stand up and blow, blow Bruce uh, blah, yeah, 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 kid can't even talk. Blow Bruce Arians' house down. Say that five times fast. Blow Bruce can, Arians' house I'm down is try. what I was trying to say. If I blow right. Bruce Arians' house down five times fast, I might get us fired. That's a tough one, and I'm not going to say it. But that can come out all different okay. ways out of my mouth, okay. so let's not go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But, but Moving with, right along. But uh, we're, we're, here's one thing I'll say, because, I mean, I, I agree with you with a lot, but we don't know what's gone on behind the scenes. We don't know what's been said, you know, there has been some, I don't know how you want to classify it, passive aggressiveness that comes out of Brady's camp to a degree. And Bruce is chippy. He ain't going to play it. And one of the reasons I love Bruce is Bruce doesn't give a damn if you're the GOAT or Peyton Manning or Big Ben or some other star. He's just going to say it the way he sees it. And if he feels like you're gonna, you're kind of, you know, I don't know what I want to say, weaseling out of a situation or he feels like somebody's playing politics behind the scene, Bruce doesn't give a damn. He's going to call it out and make it tough and, and be that way. That's what I enjoy about Bruce. But, yes, it's a little awkward or a little weird, you know, when it comes to Tom Brady. You're right because he is a different entity. He's the biggest star we probably ever have seen in the history of football. And, of course, all that he's accomplished, it is. It's different to hear, you know, a coach talk about a guy uh, of that level. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.